Welcome back. Uh, time to look at the headlines on the front pages of the National Dailies right here on The Breakfast. I'm glad to say we have joining us uh, Ezekiel Inyayetuk, who is a public affairs analyst amongst many other things. Uh, architect Inyayetuk, good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. All right. Great. Fantastic. Um, uh, we will uh, start a uh, look at the headlines with uh, the leadership newspaper this morning. The big one there with a the kicker rising insecurity. The headline reads, Frightened senators tell PMB to sit up or face impeachment. There's details on page four of the leadership. Now, the writers to that headline give president six, six weeks to end insecurity. It's belated attempt by lawmakers, PANDEF is a pan Niger Delta forum, and as well as CSO saying that. We're working to bring the situation under control, FG. Lawmakers' action, just bravado, call for anarchy, presidency. And Nasarawa government shuts schools over security threats. That's uh, the big one on the leadership. Now, at the top of that front page, Commonwealth Games begins today. Uh, Musa Brume to defend crowns. No rest um, for them, it seems. Uh, ADC's Kachiku unveils Buhari as running mate. Perfect timing, uh, you say, for our guest who is here. Uh, FG OKs 200 and 2023 to 2024 MTE, MTEF uh, projects uh, projects rather 225 trillion naira GDP economy by 2025. That's a medium term expenditure framework. The federal government OKs 2023 2024 a medium term expenditure framework projects uh, 225 trillion naira GDP economy. By 2025, we pray that that uh, comes to pass. Uh, we have Naira falls to 710 as speculators spike demand. Gunboat kills four policemen, two pipeline surveillance workers in Bielsa State. Uh, headlines on the front page of the leadership. Let's go straight to the punch with this one. I swap fear spreads. A presidency senators clash over impeachment threat. Fear spreads. Presidency, senators clash over impeachment threat. The writers to that, uh, Abuja Nasarawa schools, shot. A residents fear terrorist attacks slam FG. Opposition, uh, senators give Buhari six weeks ultimatum to end insecurity. That's a six-week ultimatum to end insecurity. Presidency lampoons opposition senators says they are babyish. It's uh, quite interesting. When we'll I analyze that in a few Minutes uh, still with the punky newspaper, Naira falls 34 percent to 710. Uh, Senate summons a Mayfield. It's quite interesting. I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in hearing what he has to say. Details on page 29. Subsidy probe. Reps say 23 all firms unknown. Khan's opposition to Muslim Muslim ticket godly says Dogara. Review water, review water bill, state governors tell lawmakers. Review water bill, state governors tell lawmakers. Food crisis imminent, house raises the alarm. Food crisis imminent, house raises the alarm. We have uh, the punch also st sticking with the ASU strike and, of course, uh, uh, the labor uh, rally, the mega one. Uh, it says uh, ASU strike, labor continues protests. Slams politicians again. As a strike, Labour continues protests. Slams as politicians again. Studying in distress. Sad tales of Ogun's forgotten school children. Lagos woman with a stillbirth steals Oyo benefactor's baby. It's quite bizarre. Lagos woman with stillbirth steals Oyo benefactor's baby. Banker robber killed as gunmen waylay. Bullion van, banker robber killed as gunmen waylay uh, bullion van. And final one from the punch, Abuja policemen invade Lagos house, rob businessman, brother. Oh my, uh, a new day, new drama, you say. That's it for the punch. Let's go over to the next uh, newspaper, which happens to be The Nation this morning. It um, gives prominence to the ongoing uh, uh, crisis between the presidency and the uh, some senators. Uh, the headline, big one there, says Senate in stormy session over renewed attacks by bandits. 
uh, minority senators walk out, give Buhari six-week ultimatum. Security, not partisan concern, Senate tells opposition members. Federal government, we are bringing the situation under control. Note that in that headline, or the writers there, the use of the word impeachment or impeach is missing. Let's go on at the bot at the top of that front page. Uh, rising aviation fuel price force airlines to cut flights. Rising aviation fuel price forces airlines to cut flights. Governors reject water resources bill inconsistent with the law. They put that in quotation marks. Bakers seek suspension of government fees on bread. Bakers seek suspension of government fees on bread. I'm sure that in a bit to address the rising cost and price of the staple in Nigeria. Or your government reinstates 129 sacked workers or sacked teachers. Or your government reinstate 129 sacked teachers. Uh, a feel good story uh, and some chair for us in a, in a sea of very bad news in the pages of the papers this morning. Varsity strike, labor, Asu adamant. Varsity strike, labor, Asu adamant. APC names Gobert Senate leader. APC names Gobert Senate leader. Reps to probe Iguini, others over electoral act. Reps to probe Iguini, others over electoral act. Oshun, NAF partner on aviation city. That's talking about the Nigerian Air Force. And there's a picture there of the Oshun state governor, the outgoing Oshun state governor, and a member of the Nigerian Armed Forces. Let's move over from the Nation newspaper to the last paper on our table this morning. This happens to be the Daily Trust. And uh, it goes with a big, it has two big stories actually. Uh, the big one there, Buhari convenes emergency security meeting as senators dangle impeachment. The writers to that headline, you must go, Nigeria must survive, lawmakers tell president. Opposition members give president six-week ultimatum and terrorist threat to kidnap Buhari mayor propaganda FG. Another big one on that front page, CVR, that's continuous voter registration. Voters in last minute rush three days to deadline. Voters in last minute rush three days to deadline. And don't forget uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission has fixed uh, the 31st of July as the last day for the continuous voter registration exercise. Naira crashes to 707 to the dollar as Senate summons a Mayfield. Healthcare cost over 50% of Nigerians falling into poverty. WHO and finally, insecurity 16 states risk major food crisis reps. 16 states risk major food crisis reps. There are other stories as covered by other newspapers as well. Let's uh, welcome at this point our guest analyst, architect Ezekiel Inyayatuk. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, Mr. Inyayatuk. Let's uh, start with one that I think uh, uh, you know, we'll have to thank God that it's coinciding with your, your appearance today on the program. Uh, ADC's Kachiku unveils Buhari as running mate. Uh, this is coming on the front page of the leadership this morning. Uh, I hope this is not uh, who we think it is, architect Inyayatuk. <laughs> is this who we think it is? <laughs> he's not the son of President Buhari, please. <laughs> and he's not even from Kata State. He's from Niger State. And um, one of the most exciting young people that I've um, come in contact with. And um, one of those people that have a lot of respect for me. Uh, I happen to know uh, him very, very personally, and I did put a call across to him. And I must commend Mr. Kachiku for wanting to put governance above what some people may tag political expediency. It is on account of political expediency how to win a ticket that somebody does not mind running a Muslim Muslim ticket because it's like, I've got to win, I've got to win, I've got to win, you know? But when you talk in terms of leadership and governance, you look for people that will add value, substantial value to your government. So I did um, put a call across to Buhari, and we spoke at length. And um, several other presidential candidates, several, at least three that I know of, 
and major, some major, had approached him and he said no. You know, that he was, a, and he just told me, DG, because it's from, it's from you, I'll have a chat. And just, just less than an hour chat between himself and Mr. Kachiku, there was that unanimity of purpose, essence of taking public office. There was that agreement, there was that, that it was, the, 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 their spirits just jailed. And like the Bible says, two cannot work together except they be agreed. They had a clear focus on what the nation is all about, where the nation is heading, and how the team that should be the nation should be. And today, I'm very happy that the two of them have um, agreed to work on the rescue mission, which incidentally is a byline of ADC. I think that, you know, what's going on now? Nigerians don't know that we have six months of campaign. I think that these major parties are going to be in for a rough shot. And as we talk along the line, I will unveil exactly what is going on. And Nigerians must put their eyes on the ball. Hmm. Uh, as some would say for the all African Democratic Congress, um, since... Uh, um, uh, King Mugalu failed to secure the presidential ticket of the party. The party has lost steam. I'm um, aware that a uh, number of uh, your BOT members, uh, I know of one from Lagos State, have uh, left the party. Uh, also some members of the party, at least I know in Lagos State where we are, uh, have left the party. Now you're the governorship candidate of the ADC in Akwaibom State and a, a, a key member of that party. Would you agree with this view that the party has lost steam since Mugalu uh, took a bow and uh, left. Winning an election is about one vote. Any party that loses one vote should be won. And Professor Kingsley Moanu is not one vote. He has a lot of people that are with him. So losing um, him hurt me particularly because I brought him into ADC. I also brought Mr. Kachiku. I also brought Mr. Moye, you know? So losing him is a blow to the party. I could never dismiss that with a wave of the hand. I won't. If not so, people will definitely lose respect for me. But be that as it may, I have wished and I continue to wish that he will make everything Mr. Mune is back in the party. Barista Maki is back in the party. You must allow him to go through, I mean, he's worked a lot. He really, really saw it as something that was within his hold. So sleeping is not something you expect him to just, oh, it doesn't matter. Because he was intent. He meant every word of what he was trying to do, okay? But one person had to win the ticket. And what we are doing, friends like us, are, are very strategically looking for openings, time, because timing is everything. And I know that it means well for ADC, understood the ideologies of ADC. He agreed with the ideologies of ADC, which is why he wanted to come to ADC in the first place, because he's a very principled person. We must allow him that latitude to go through this phase and pray for him and i believe that i'm strongly believe that somewhere along the line he'll be back but that said he is a man that this country not just adc this country cannot dismiss with a wave of their hand all right all right let's uh, move on and uh, uh, to the next paper thanks uh, for that uh, of course you said it all you can't uh, expect uh, a uh, man not to move with his crowd and uh, we look forward to seeing a keenly contested uh, you know, presidential, a keen presidential and campaign. Let me, just, let me just hit it yeah. on the last note. A lot of the people that left, understandably, are back. The likes of Braithwaite. Is Braithwaite back? And they've done, they are doing, because they are still on it, they are doing a wonderful job. ADC is not just a party, it's a family. And when people are grieving, some people are hurt. Do you understand? And you must understand that. And if they took an action, you should be kind enough to understand what's happened. But a lot of them, I can tell you for free. I'm a BOT member, or yes, 
I, I can tell you they are, they are coming back, you know, quietly, silently, nicely. And they are seeing that ADC is actually what they thought it is. That's a party with a difference. We are not just a party, we are a family. And that makes all the difference. All right. All right. Thank you for that. Um, of course, uh, we know we'll always get the best information from you. It's always a case of hearing from the horse's own mouth whenever you're here. And we're grateful for that. Uh, let's move over to the punch this morning. Uh, you know, we see pictures of uh, the mega rally, mega protest of the Nigerian Labour Congress on the front page of the Punch newspaper. This one held at Abuja. They had uh, protests all over the country on Tuesday. And yesterday, Wednesday, it was it was at Abuja. You can see that they were joined by uh, in solidarity by people who are not members of the NLC, the likes of uh, Shea Usani, who himself was a pro-democracy activist back in the day before. Or so he joined a human rights activist before he joined politics. Uh, on Tuesday, we had a Femi Fallon that joined them in um, in Lagos in Lagos State. Um, so the punch has this headline: "Has to strike, Labour continues protests, slams politicians again." Now, what are your thoughts you, uh, on this? They've said um, after these uh, two days of, of nationwide protests, uh, if the federal government does not accede to the demands of ASU, they as Labour will embark on a national strike. And of course, this will uh, mean that the country will have to shut down for three days as they want to have it. Uh, do you think Labour's moves will force the hand of uh, the Buhari-led administration to give ASO their nearly one trillion naira in cash up front? Okay, I, I I'll say this. The theme of my review this morning is going to be largely eyes on the ball. Eyes on the ball. Number one. I, I sympathize with ASU very strongly because I'm personally involved in, in, in my, my family where my father had 24 children, I was the 23rd, but uh, my mother had five children. Out of the five, the, 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 the first is a lady, she's a professor, and I'm the last. So being a professor and being the first, you can imagine how it touches me personally that she cannot get money and somebody who has worked so hard now has to literally go cap in hand. Even if I'm the brother, but I mean, this, this is somebody that raised me. Well, I, I see it as a payback time, but imagine other professors, what they have to go through at this time of their life and other lecturers as well. So for me, I want to beg the federal government to just please pay these people is unfair. Number two, I want to tell ASU that they need to be strategic in their thinking and nationalistic. Please, where is the one trillion naira that you are asking for? It's not there. And I, I want to call on all well-meaning Nigerians to come in and create a round, all the things that they are doing between them. They are just... Each person knows that they are playing the ostrich. Each is lying to the other. That's a simple truth. But if we have nationalists come to the table, they will tell federal government, can you just open your account and tell this the truth? Can you just apologize to them for how long you have lied to them, how deceitful you have been to them? Can you just apologize to them and let them know that you don't have this money? And answer. We know that this is the right thing to do, but think of it this way. 100% of the resources of Nigeria, I say this authoritatively, because the, the, the state is like a microcosm of the nation. I know a Kwaibom state that is one of the most endowed of all the states in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The resources that come in, the, the, the size of the land that is pretty compact, the fact that the whole uh, terrain is compact, having the best coastline and then being number one in oil and money production and getting being one of the top three in revenue allocation with all that Akaibom has running a budget of over 500 billion for the first past almost 15 years annual budget of over 500 billion with all that Akaibom has our money cannot effectively address one sector of the economy. And I say it with every sense of responsibility as one who's done a lot of research because I want to be a governor that is driven by 
passion and cerebral content and not, not just by money. Because of that, if we solve ASU's problem holistically, the medicals will come. The housing will come. So many other sectors will say, okay, fine. If they can you know, make this and get their own, let's also go. And this country does not have that capacity at all. So I want to say that, coming back to what I talked about, eyes on the ball, Nigerians should look, number one, let people have their salary. But in terms of the policies that are sustainable, the next few months of this administration cannot do it. Okay. Instead, let us focus our attention on the different parties, what they bring to the table, and let us to set up a major engagement platform to let each of these candidates address what they have in mind to do with the education relative to what must be available for the rest of the state. Right. It is here that we are going to start to have ingenious solutions. So, back to eyes on the ball, ASU should look beyond this government. They have nothing to offer. And they will always tell you one truth that I always tell you is that they've done their very best. That's right. actually one truth that they tell us. And their very best, you know how to mark that as lecturers. All right, no, all right. <laughs> Interesting. All right, uh, uh, let's move over to the nation this morning. Um, the water resources bill has, uh, or the water bill has generated a lot of controversy, public discourse and debate, even a uh, threat to the political future of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Um, today, the papers are telling us that the Nigerian Governors Forum, uh, they've spoken and that they have rejected the water resources bill. Uh, the nation puts it this way. Governors reject water resources bill. What are your thoughts on that? They say that this bill is inconsistent with the law. You know, there's, there's a land use act. And that land use act, you know, uh, some years back when Madame Okonjo Iwala was uh, the CME, you know, Minister of Finance and CME, I, I, I happen to have the privilege of um, sharing a robust relationship with her. Um, she believes so much in my professionalism and all those things. So in... All right, it seems that we have a network freeze. Oh. Uh, Ezekiel Ngaito, can you hear me, please? They found very instructive. Uh, I since I'm paused, I hope all is well. Yes, yes, uh, you're can back. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please go on. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please go on. I, you can hear me, okay. And something they said that was very instructive. They said that to change the Land Use Act is almost an impossibility that we should walk around it. You know, I found that very instructive that we should walk around it because we won't be able to change it. Now, the Speaker of the House of Reps should understand what the Land Use Act is and that this is the oil of every governor. They, they guard it as if their life depends on it. So if he thinks he's going to do something, it has to be, in, it has to be consistent with what is in the Constitution. The level of inconsistency is to that extent, the level of the irrelevance of such a law. And this water resources bill need to substantially alter the, you know, the Land Use Act before it is going to be, you know, uh, actionable. And I think that governors, in fact, this time the governors are... All right, because I really would like to know what is his real interest in that water, water resource bill. All right. All right. Thank you very much, uh, architect uh, Ezekiel Yatuk. Let's um, also look at what's happening with the, uh, uh, the continuous voter registration exercise. Um, a reason I'm shying away from the stormy session in the Senate and the Naira is because we're going to be discussing that in depth with our guest in a matter of uh, minutes. So uh, we hear from the Daily Trust newspaper that uh, voters are in a last minute rush. I three think days. we are frozen again. Okay, okay. he cannot hear me. Uh, uh, we, we will try and sort that out. Um, is, it clear? is it clear now? Can you hear me? No. 
Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you now. Oh, fantastic. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Right. Yes, I can. All right. What, what I'm are th hearing you. What are your thoughts on the last minute rush to to get registered to vote in the ongoing CVR as captured in the Daily Trust newspaper um, three days to the deadline? You think that uh, this is enough time for everyone who hasn't gotten registered to do so? Are we used to waiting to the last minute before we go get registered for things like this? Because it's been on for some time. Let me, let me say something that uh, might shock many because I was almost in for a root shock. Obviously, I've contested twice, so I have my PVC. I've registered, I've more than registered, I've more than registered. But, and I know where my PVC was supposed to be. And curiously, something just told me, look, just go take it and keep it again. Guy, two days I sat in my house, I couldn't find my PVC. I couldn't find it. Two days back, I had to rush to INEC because my PVC was missing. I don't know how that happened. So please, fellow Nigerians, this morning, go look for where your PVC day. Go and confirm and reconfirm. And when you get it, carry it and take it to a special place and lock it there hard. Because it's, it's not a out of place for your driver, your one person or the other, just somebody. You know, because of not having some people carry PVC, just identification, they don't have, they steal others because people just say this PVC and they just carry and go. So please, and some others can actually be mischievous. So please, and these are things that some of you that you can do it online, especially for a reissue, you know. So please go and look for your PVC, carry it, and then keep it separate so that you won't have any problem on election day. Because as soon as the window is shut and campaigns are open, I can tell you for free that we are going to have the most robust, most exciting engagements that is going to lead to the sort of revolution that you have never seen before in this country. There's something about Nigeria. I call it a client nation for God. Nigeria is a country where it works on principles that just defy all postulations. So my advice to you is go get your PVP because in the last week before today, the hurry to go and vote is going to be such that you don't want to hear that you can't find your PVC at that time. Just get your PVC now, confirm that it's there. If you see it, go and keep it. If it is lost, go and swear an affidavit and go ahead and get a reissue Try that online. If you, start, if you look at it today, you can finish all those processes today, and then you know you are waiting to get the full thing, and then you're ready for, for the show. But this issue of always waiting for last minute um, is not good enough, because the crowd is, is almost, I don't know how INEC is going to cope. And finally, Oshun election was a tiebreaker. Everybody just said, wow, votes now count. It was a final nail on the coffin of doubt. And as a result, people are now ginger and they are now rushing to go and get big pieces. I feel so sorry. When I went to INEC, around past three, four, the man had not had his breakfast because he rushed in to try to eat during the day and he was, he was, he checked his time, you know, not time, he checked his uh, feet beat, you know, and he discovered that he had done over 11,000 steps within INEC for the day. That means that from morning, this man did this because he's in charge of, uh, you know, the voter registration, he's the head of that section. He was going up and down, up and down, up and down. And he had done over 11,000 steps that day, walking within the INEC office. So I, I, I want to really applaud INEC now for the sacrifice and um, I, I pray that God gives them the strength and none of them breaks down to be able to successfully go through this period. Fantastic, fantastic. We always know you will do justice, if I'm more than justice, to, um, uh, to the issues raised in the national dailies. Uh, and of course, you've given us um, <laughs> a possible boost, a way to start our day with your 
positive outlook and analysis uh, on forthcoming elections. I think it's something that people are looking forward to. Uh, thank God that uh, that thing prompted you to go look for that inner voice, that still small voice, <laughs> prompted you to go look for your PVC. I think you said your prayer that morning. Um, architecting. So God forbid that it be said on the day of uh, voting that you as candidate cannot vote. You know, what happened to Jonathan will not happen to you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, architect Ezekiel Yatuk, thank you for your time. We'll see you next week. Thank you. God bless you. It's the 28th of July, 2022. It's time to look at what happened on this day in history. When we come back, we look at what the senators have been saying. Some of them would like to impeach Mr. President. Is this possible? Is this feasible? We'll be right back. <laughs>